Dit is so lekker om saam met te kan keier en net te voorrecht dat om te weet dat jylle ons toelaat om bykie inspraak in jylle levens te heen. Laas week het Stefan so lekker gepraat oor dat jylle die hoop is, dat jylle die toekomst is, dat jylle elkeen wat kyk, elke tiener wat daar buiten is, die hoop is vir ons, vir die toekomst. Maar vandag het ons een baie speciale broer in Christus, as ek het so kan noem, wat saam met ons kyk, hy is Matthew Liberty van uh, van Halloween Church, wat net die oorkant ons is, ek denk nie, ek sê die naam nou correct, uit nie, maar hulle sal my vergewe, maar dit is net so lekker om, een deel te kan wees van, meer as een kerk, en dat het gaan oor kerk, nie as een specifieke gebouw nie, maar as die lichaam, van Christus, en ons was hierdie week, en hulle was ook betrokken daarby, by Youth United, ons in die hele Zuid-Afrika, het die groepe by mekaar gekom, waar ons gevast en gebid het, vir deurbrake in Zuid-Afrika, en vandag wil ons rarig net, um, gaan ons na sy testimony kyk, maar ons wil rarig hee dat dit een inspraak in jou leven sal maak en hoop sal gee vir jou om te sien hoe God nog steeds werk in vandaagse leven. What's up guys, thank you so much for having me, just a shout out to Fusion, to Christian and to Stefan for having me on this video. Um, I love the whole concept and what Stefan was speaking about last week about hope because I believe that's exactly what a testimony is and that's exactly what Jesus is. You know, the Word of God talk speaks about how I have this hope as an anchor for my soul and how hope is an anchor for our souls. And so I hope that the testimony I shared today would encourage you, it would uplift you, and it would show you that God is still alive and that God is in the business of healing people and changing lives and transforming lives. And so the story I want to share with you is just about how I came to know Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. So when I was young, I grew up in a home with in a Christian home, a traditional Christian home where my parents were went to church every Sunday. In fact, my dad was actually a, a homestead leader and then he became a zone supervisor and he was really like climbing the ranks in ministry, if I could have put it that way. And so my, my household had a strong foundation of faith, you know, and so my parents brought us up in the same way that we would um, believe in Jesus, that we, we even went to a Christian school. My whole primary school um, school in Korea, we were in a Christian school and so we, would, we were exposed to Jesus and we were exposed to other Christians but what happened was when I was in about, I think I was about 9 or 8 years old my dad got diagnosed with cancer and so they told him he's got 6 months to live um, but he ended up living 3 years um, thanks, to, uh, thanks to God for that, he ended up living 3 years and so when I was in grade 5 at about 10 years old unfortunately my dad passed away, went to be with the Lord and I remember when that happened I was so mad because in my mind, God, we Christians, okay, and everyone keeps telling me about how much God loves us. So in my mind, God doesn't love us because God killed my dad. Because I'm thinking, how can he serve God and yet he died? And, and we watched him suffer and we watched him live in pain. And it was like, I always tell everyone, it was like we watched him deteriorate, slowly deteriorate. And so for the next couple of years, there was no male figure in my life. And so the only male figure I looked up to was my older brother, who was like two years older than me. And I had an older cousin as well. And so they had this burden to bear of trying to be the male figure in my life and my younger brother's life. And so with that being said, they were battling with things themselves. And so that led to, to us going down a path of experimenting with things we shouldn't experiment with. And I remember I had a, a best friend, who we're still friends to this day, that we started experimenting with different drugs together. Um, we started partying a little bit, we started smoking and drinking and doing things that we knew fell short of, of what God had planned for us in our lives. And I remember that I started messing around with girls and doing all of the, the different things. I don't want to glorify the things I was doing, but I was living a life that lacked purpose. I was living a life that um, had no intention. I remember waking up every single morning and feeling empty feeling like there's nothing for me, feeling like all I was called to do or everything um, in my life was just to, to wake up in the morning and go through the motions. And I know a lot of young people feel that too, you just wake up and go through the motions every single day. You feel like there's no purpose and there's no intention for every day. And that was me, I was in that place. And so what happened one, one uh, week, my, my best friend and I, who had been experimenting together and dabbling in different things, we were gymming. So we were in the gym every every day, it was our routine. And the Monday I remember he came to gym and there was something so different about him. Like this, he had this glow about him. 
and I was I was just wondering like what is so different about this guy and so he told me that he had gone to church on the Sunday and when he was at church they gave an invitation an altar call for if you had never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior that you should go up and receive him and he said he went up he went to the front and he received Jesus as Lord and Savior and that was on the Sunday the Monday he came to jump and there was something completely different about him he didn't even tell me anything I said to him I said what happened like I remember just wondering like what happened and he told me that he received Jesus as the Lord and Savior and I thought to myself I'm very competitive you know I used to play sports so I thought he's not gonna beat me this oak is not gonna beat me so I said okay I'm gonna open my Bible and I'm gonna learn about this for myself and so in true irony I opened up the Bible in the book of Matthew and I started reading about Jesus and the more I started reading about Jesus this was like in the space of a week I started to long to have this relationship for him because when I before I started reading my Bible I remember feeling purposeless and when I started reading about Jesus it's like that void started to get filled and so one day in my room I got down on my knees and I just I watched I was watching a video of a, a preacher preaching and in my room by myself I gave my heart to Jesus and I can truly say to you from that day since I've given my heart to the Lord I've had difficulties yes but every single day I've, I've woken up with a sense of purpose with a sense of intention you know since I met Jesus and since I received him as my personal Lord and Savior I didn't need to go to any type of rehab I didn't need to go see a psychologist God healed me completely he healed me completely there's a scripture in Romans 8 28 which says God works all things out for the good of those who love him who are called according to his purpose so even in the middle of everything I was going through with my dad passing away God was working things out for me and so my encouragement to you today is this no matter what you're going through God isn't dead he's alive and he's working things out for your good I can promise you that that it might not feel like it right now but God is working things out for your good and if he could do it for me if he could love me enough to reach out to me through my best friend who had been doing the exact same things as me then he can do the same thing for you his love for you is unconditional it's unending it's from everlasting to everlasting and he loves you today more than anything else in this world so if you don't know this jesus that i've spoken about if you don't know this love that i've spoken about that i want to invite you today to receive jesus christ as your personal lord and savior the bible tells us that today is the day of salvation and if you once found yourself in in a relationship with god if you were once in fellowship with him and you find that you're now on the prodigal side of life you've drifted away from him i want to tell you that god isn't mad at you but he's mad about you and completely and madly in love with you and he wants nothing more than a relationship with you so if that's if you've never received jesus christ as your personal lord and savior and or you want to come back to him today i'm going to encourage you to say this prayer chris is going to say a prayer and then you can just follow after him right so so let's just pray together and I, I really want to encourage you that if you made this decision feel free to contact me or Matthew our phone numbers will be on the screen we want to to uh, share this journey with you we want to make sure that you're not alone through this journey but uh, with no further ado let's just pray together father God we just come before you today and we want to thank you for who you are father Thank you that we know that it doesn't matter what we did, what our past is, or what we think of ourselves. The only thing that matters is what you did on the cross. Father, and I want to pray for everyone that's uh, opening up their hearts today. Father, that you will come in and just clean everything. And like Matthew said, he didn't, didn't need rehab. He didn't need psychology. All he needed was Jesus Christ. And thank you that we can know that when we open up your heart, our hearts, that you will come in with all your glory and all you of who you are. Father, I really want to bring everyone that's making or opening up their hearts today and place them before you, your feet. And may there be more and more testimonies coming out of this. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.